If you were to ask me what my favorite thing about flying is, I'd tell you it's the feeling of freedom every time my UAV takes off. That's right. Every time I head out to the flight field, I start humming with excitement, thinking about the uncharted airways I might explore. When I fly, I am as free as a butterfly. Let's slow down there, cowboy. Every time we head to the flight field, it's because I've made sure to dot the I's and cross the T's of legality. This isn't the wild, wild west. There are laws every pilot needs to follow. I have no thumbs, there are no eyes for me to cross, and besides, these laws only apply when you're flying outdoors, not indoors. Correct, but it's still important to know what you can and cannot do with a drone. You might not have a driver's license, but you at least know to stop at a red light, right? Drone laws and regulations are the same way. They are here to make sure everyone is safe and following the same game plan when they're in the air. Fine. Let's follow the rules, but no laws can stop me from feeling like a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. For starters, it's good to know that drone laws have no age limit. No matter if you're in diapers or dentures, everyone who flies a drone is required to follow the drone laws. These laws were designed by the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA is the lord of all that flies, controlling everything from airplanes to mini drones. When drones were first designed, there weren't any rules in place to protect pilots or passerbys. It really was the Wild West. But before any showdowns at high noon could take place, the FAA stepped in and delivered the first set of laws. But since the drone space has kept growing, the FAA has continued to refine their rules to ensure that safety is held at the highest priority. Because drones keep getting fancier and faster, the FAA has to be on its toes, which means laws can change at any time. Before you head outside to fly, make sure you or your instructor has double-checked the FAA website to ensure that you are doing everything in your power to fly lawfully. Hit them with the laws, Rex. Anytime that you're flying a drone, safety is your number one priority. Always follow safety guidelines like the ones provided in this course. Flying is only fun when you're keeping drones like me and pilots like you safe. Make sure that you never fly higher than 400 feet. This flight ceiling makes sure your drone stays out of airplanes and other manned aircraft. Now, I know a lot of you don't have a 400 foot long measuring tape, so it might be hard for you to know where that ceiling might be. Some drones have an altitude tracker, which tells you how high you're flying. But for your run of the mill drone, a safe rule of thumb is to make sure you or your spotter can clearly see your drone without needing to break out the binoculars. 400 feet is pretty high. That's like eight or nine houses stacked on top of each other. So explore the skies, just don't send your drone into orbit. Which is also the next rule. You should never fly a drone outside of you or your spotter's visual line of sight. A drone you can't see is a drone you cannot control. And it's a drone you can't keep out of trouble. To keep your drone from turning all Terminator and dive bombing dog walkers or strollers, make sure to always fly in an area where you can keep an eye on your drone 100% of the time. If you're flying close to an airport, it's your responsibility to let the airport know when and where you'll be flying. This way, air traffic control can make sure pilots know of every obstacle their planes might encounter. Which will keep your drone from getting shredded through a jet engine and from potentially causing an emergency landing. Planes are supposed to fly, remember? Make sure you aren't the reason one has to land, otherwise you'll be in a Houston-sized problem. But I'm too young for jail. You can call your airport, or there are apps on your phone that make notifying air traffic control as easy as pushing a button. Another rule is to never fly near firefighters or emergency medical teams. When these teams are rushing to help someone in need, a rogue drone can cause a lot of panic, which can stop rescue missions in their tracks. Leave the superhero stuff to the professionals and keep your drone out of their way. Along with keeping rogue drones under control, make sure you're never flying over people. Yourself and your spotter are fine, but what happens if you lose control when you're flying over the top of someone you don't know? Never fly in a way that puts anyone or anything in danger. Now, just like cars need license plates, drones need registration numbers. Like little UAV tattoos, registration numbers are only needed on drones which weigh more than 0.55 pounds, which means most micro drones can fly registration free. Here we go, talking about my weight again. <laughs> Anyways, it's also important to know about any drone laws your city, county, or state might have. 
These laws can be different than the ones established by the FAA, so just like with those federal laws, it's important to study up on all the local laws you might have in your area. Remember how we said the FAA laws are always changing? Well, one of the most recent changes comes in the form of testing. Soon, recreational pilots, that's you guys, will need to pass a drone test in order to fly outdoors. Just like how passing your driver's test works, this test will require some studying. So make sure you're paying attention in this course. Another big part of being a responsible pilot is knowing what's ethical. Which means doing what's right, even if there technically isn't a law against it. It's a pilot's job to make the right decision, which means you should never do any of these things. Don't trespass. It's technically not illegal to fly over someone's private property, but that doesn't mean they'd be happy about it. Before you fly over any land that isn't public or your own, ask the owner for permission. No one likes to feel like they're being spied on. Always ask permission before you take a photo or video of someone. Now, while I might be a gorgeous butterfly, I will admit I've got a few critics. Beauty is a blessing and a curse. On top of making sure you're not disturbing people, it's a drone pilot's job to ensure they aren't disrupting wildlife either. While it might seem like a great challenge to chase a bird through the air, a pilot should never, I repeat, never use their drone to harass nature. Whenever we venture into the wilderness, humans are guests in Mother Nature's house. You wouldn't want a stranger flying a drone through your house, so let's make sure we're treating Mother Nature with the same amount of respect. Even if you're doing something like filming wildlife, Remember that drones are loud and the unfamiliar noises can spook animals. If the animal you're filming is looking up at the drone, you're probably too close. Not everyone loves drones, so it's up to pilots like us to make sure we aren't harassing or annoying anyone with our flying. Be aware of the people around you and show the world what responsible drone piloting looks like. A responsible pilot is a pilot who follows all the rules, is always aware of their surroundings, and does their best to share the joy of flight with the people around them in a safe and ethical way. It's a lot to handle, I know, but you guys look up to the challenge. Are you ready for another challenge in the next video? Until we see you again, arrivederci!